everyone and welcome to this exclusive conversation with VR expert and head of business at Shapes XR, Gabriele Romagnoli. My name is Abby Guthkelch and I'm the global head of executive engagement for Meta's Reality Labs. And I'll be putting the big questions to Gabriele in just a moment. But before I jump in with those questions, I wanted to take a minute to set the stage for our conversation. In the last 18 months, there's been a lot of talk about the metaverse and especially about what that might mean for the future of work. But today, we're not going to just focus on the future. We're going to talk about a technology that is already changing the way businesses work today. And that technology, of course, is virtual reality. Virtual reality is having a huge impact on the way companies approach creativity and design, helping teams turn bright ideas into best-selling products faster and more efficiently by working together directly in 3D. Now, there's nobody I think could better be placed to tell us about this impact than Gabriele. So let's get into it. Gabriele, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an absolute pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, now, before I get into questions about VR and the impact of VR, I'd love to take a moment to just um, introduce us to you, your, your background, how you got into VR and uh, how you got into Shapes XR. Well, I mean, um, I have a different background in a way, come out of tech. Uh, so I do have a PhD in biotechnology, work as a scientist and a program manager in a big pharmaceutical company. But I think it was back in 2016, so the first uh, consumer headset hit the market. And that was the moment that I think everything changed to some extent. So people might remember the first experience when they put the headset and maybe they start shooting zombies. What for me stick was the fact that I could create. I could create in 3D, I could meet with other people. So the first exploration were indeed on that sense. Uh, so uh, running workshop with people that were on the other side of the world and be able to connect in a way that would have been impossible just on a Zoom conference. And uh, indeed, that creative effort. So that led me to explore various creative tools, uh, that sculpting, animating, and while entering this world, I got in contact with the teams, got passionate about what they were doing, and here I am at ShipsXR as head of business. I love that. Just not a not a sort of natural sort of like progression that you indeed. would imagine, but really driven by the the passion that you felt and the, the sort of change um, from you experiencing it. That's wonderful. Now, as you say, you've uh, you've been in the VR landscape or in the VR environments for since 2016. But just in the last five years, how have you really seen um, that VR landscape change? Right, I mean, I think that the first thing that really stick and it's uh, really prominent is the advancement in the technology. So we have moved from something that is heavy, bulky, connected to a powerful PC, uh, to something that now you can have on your desk, you can carry around very easily. So, and that is really a, a major change. Uh, I remember still back then that when we were uh, connecting with companies, uh, one of the major obstacles is that, yeah, my headset is in the office, I don't have access to that PC. Now it's, it's, a completely, it's completely different. So that's certainly advancement from the hardware perspective, but now also the, the quality of the apps. Mm -hmm. And let's be honest, from, from a wide variety, right? From meeting, collaboration, uh, creation, uh, uh, simulation as well. So I think that that also has made big progress and, and organization, individuals are getting more and more value out of the shelf without the need to build their own content, their own apps. So that, that, is, that made it much more uh, approachable. Absolutely. I, I, you know, I think the, um, the, the ecosystem of developers and, and creators is absolutely so important to, to the future of the, the, the technology. So I'm so glad that you, you, you talked about that and you know, the sort of the accessibility, the inclusivity that, that, that comes with that. Now, you've just talked about five years back, but let's talk right. about in the present day. Absolutely. Um, what <clears throat> excites you most about VR today? Right, I mean, <clears throat> if I think about that is the ability to, to, to start creating and collaborating. So it is the fact that, and in order to do that, you don't need to be an expert. You don't need to have those years of experience to, to start creating and sharing your ideas. So uh, this, of course, opens a lot of opportunity for a talent pool that maybe doesn't have access to, to those, for example, 3D skills. Uh, 
and one reason for that is because when ideas are generated, when, when you share those ideas on a flat screen, it's different. Mm. It's not like if we would see, because this is what would happen. If we would wear a headset, we would actually be able to see and create this idea with our own hands, and your brain thinks differently. Mm. I can guarantee you that when you are in this environment, you start thinking about problems, you see problems, you see opportunities in a way that would be impossible on a flat screen. And you also get different inputs from the people around you that are in that space. So I think that this power to create and collaborate made more accessible thanks to our technology and a series of apps uh, that are enabling that, it's certainly what, what makes me more excited. I love that. Now, you mentioned it when you were um, giving your sort of background and how you got into to VR is sort of like, you know, the sort of, it was around this sort of like gaming stage. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that we hear quite a lot of is that, um, you know, oh, VR is just for, for gaming or it's only for the younger generation in the workforce that are interested um, in it or, um, you know, it's just a passing fad. Why would I bother investing in this technology? It's not going to be around for, for, for long enough. What are the biggest myths that you, you hear that we need to overcome or we need to get past a myth bust when it comes to VR for work? Well, <clears throat> so the first thing probably is more of a, uh, of a, let's take out this idea that VR makes you sick. Because, I mean, I can guarantee you that if someone puts you on a roller coaster as your first VR experience, then, yeah, you might get sick. <laughs> the point is that VR for work is not about roller coaster. Uh, and it's about steady, uh, reliable experience. So this is one, one first thing. And also because the technology has evolved so much, and the first experience that people might have was with literally a phone strapped to their face. We are not there. <laughs> we are not there yet anymore. We are way farther than that. So that is one thing that I want to state. If we are looking at, uh, at um, uh, I wouldn't say more of a myth, but probably when you ask about something, it's more of a change of mindset yeah. in a way. So when we think about VR, very often people, companies, think about an immediate, uh, like a one-to-one -one reproduction of reality, right? Like stepping in and I'm in a different world, but I can do the same thing, I can see the same exact thing. And that I believe is not necessarily where the whole value of this technology lies. Certainly there is. There mm -hmm. are simulations that do a great job at doing and replicating reality for training, but there is another full spectrum that people are not aware yet in some cases, and that is this ability indeed to use it to, to start creating, to start ideating, to, to, to sketch. Like if you would with, for example, a bunch of Lego blocks or maybe some cardboard that you stick together, because there is still incredible value in the ideas that come out of it, in, in, in the communication that happens around them. So one myth, it's more about, let, let's just start thinking about VR, not just as a perfect final product that I can use and experience, but other as a tool, as a creative tool, as I would use pen and paper, post-it, or a bunch of Lego box. So just, just leading on from that, why do you believe there's such an opportunity for um, organizations to to change or transform the way that they are approaching creativity um, and design. And um, why is VR the right technology to help them to do that? Right. So, I mean, first of all, I wouldn't speak necessarily about change. I would see it more as complement, right? Because uh, there is really an opportunity to bring some of the workflows that already rely, for example, on 3D tools uh, or 3D assets that companies already have available, but then easily bring them in space. And as such, VR, and now we're talking about virtual reality, it's not just about VR, it's also about mixed reality. Mm -hmm. It's also about seeing that same content in context within a certain space. And something that any 2D screen cannot provide, right? So the fact that this is becoming and is so accessible, that's just why it unlocks so many opportunities that otherwise just ideating, thinking, sharing on a flat screen would just be impossible. I, I really appreciate the fact that you, you sort of like said it's not a this or that. Exactly. It, it, you know, it absolutely is about um, you know really understanding what's right for the right you know sort of um, design uh, for the right uh, uh, output that we're doing, but also absolutely when it comes to mixed reality. And I know we spoke earlier about the fact that when I um, had my my first uh, pro headset on. 
um, and I jumped into a, a Shapes XR demo and had that mixed reality between, um, you know, being able to see the 3D design in front of me in situ in space and then be able to sort of like fully teleport actually into it and then, you know, have it all around me, which was just like a... Okay, that was my wow moment uh, within the Absolutely, absolutely. And, and this brings back to that idea that you don't need necessarily that 100% visual fidelity to, to get value, to get impressed. Because when you're bringing in and you're presenting something like that, in a completely different way, more immersive way, that is, that's just the value in itself. And then, of course, there is value from a production in terms of efficiency, uh, but that has a huge value and a huge impact. Fantastic. Now, I just mentioned Shapes XR, obviously, um, the platform that you, you work for. So I'm just going to quickly turn my attention um, to that. And there, there may be some people um, that are watching today who might not be familiar um, with Shapes XR. So could you just give us a quick elevator pitch on what the platform is about? Absolutely. So uh, Shapes uh, is a tool that unlock uh, 3D creation and collaboration for teams. So. And unlike other creative tools, what it does is that it has a storytelling features, let's call it, like a bit, a PowerPoint. So instead of just seeing static environments around you, you can tell story, for example, about a product function, about how a user interact, uh, about uh, like maybe a venue looks like. Mm -hmm. So instead of just relying on something that is static that you would create on a standard software, you can tell story and turn a storyboard into an immersive presentation. So, and I mean, I think sometimes it's hard to grasp. Mm -hmm. So m maybe a an example I could make, uh, for example, to give people a, a more uh, vivid idea. So some of uh, uh, our uh, users from the automotive industry are thinking of how the future of, of for example, autonomous cars is going to yep. look like, how uh, electric cars are going to be charged, or how do they communicate with the driver, right? And those, at the end, are stories stories of human interacting with machine, interacting with the space around them. And instead of building just a storyboard or maybe sketching it, they can build the whole story at scale and like you did, click and then be immersed in that space, invite other people, share ideas, and ultimately get something that, that they can, if they want, export, for example, to a game engine to bring further in, in the development or maybe make uh, images out of it. So. It is about the ability to create mm -hmm. in 3D and then bring that story that is just static to life in form of a story, user flow, user journey or user interactions. I love that. So <clears throat> it's, it, you know, it is the end sort of product is in being able to immerse someone inside it to tell that story, but also up till that point to have that 3D collaboration in design as well. Um, now, Getting on to some specifics yeah. and numbers and, you know, of obviously, you know, as I said, there's lots of people out there sort of with these myths around, oh, well, should I go into VR yet? Is this the right thing for me? Um, so, you know, ROI, return on investment is, is really, really key. Um, how can companies really quantify um, the ROI of, of using VR within creativity and design. Yeah. So I think one of the best example that we have is uh, was the great work that the Logitech team has done. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe sharing a little story. So uh, they were commissioned by their internal gaming department to design a venue for the launch of a new line of product. And uh, they just had three weeks uh, to come up from mood boarding, design, and actually creating the final space that then will be given to contractors to do the costing of the whole event. So what they did is that despite they were fully 3D capable, have game engine uh, expertise, they decided to do that in shapes because that allowed them to iterate much faster because they got their marketing team uh, in review so they were be basically able to run iteration four times faster than what they would do. Wow. So instead of meeting once a week, because that's when they had the output, they were, be able, they were able to meet three to four times a week for maybe 15 minutes in space and get immediate feedback from the marketing team. And lastly, of course, what they wanted to do, they wanted to share that also with people that maybe didn't have a headset, right? Yep. That makes a lot of sense. So what they did is that they were able to export what was created in shapes, one-on-one, -on -one, add some light effects, smoke, and maybe some rendering in Unity and share it with their, with their, uh, with their other stakeholders. Yep. In that case, that was twice as fast because they already have everything built at scale yep. in the right 
relationship with the right storyline already built in shapes. So these are just some examples. Yeah, and I love it. And, and also, I think it's important to really hone in on the fact that we are talking about 3D design um, and creativity, but we're not just talking about designers using it. So this is one point. So, and, and that's what's kind of like a bit striking. So in the case, in their case, they decided to go for it even though they had the, the 3D skills. So they had the capability, of course. Other people were involved, being there, the people from the marketing team, through. There is another great value that similar things could be done and can be done and are done in shapes from people that do not have 3D skills. Yeah. And this is something that is very hard to attach an ROI to it. I have another story, for example. So uh, the, um, uh, an employee from uh, La Poste, the mm -hmm. French postal yeah. system, different example, but what they did, there was dispatching center for the packages and he is not 3D equipped. But what he did is that he was able to recreate in shapes the layout, starting just from a floor plan, invite people and says, look, how do we make the flow? Where do we make the benches? Why couldn't we move it there other than moving it in another place? If that happens, how does the package then flow within it? And why do it in shapes? Because it's, it's accessible and because I can tell a story about what happens within it. Absolutely. I, I, just such a good example. Now, um, before we come on to sort of like looking in the future and where this could potentially go to, um, wider application. Right? At the moment, sort of VR is is used, um, you know, not wall to wall in companies, not through every single department, uh, not through every single business at the moment. But what do you think it's going to take um, to uh, to get VR to have this wider application, wider, wider take up within a work context? And how close are we to achieving it? Right. So I think that there are many factors, uh, certainly uh, technology, like the, the, the hardware itself, uh, is, it's, it's getting lighter and lighter. Uh, and, and more comfortable, uh, mixed reality, it's gonna, it is already making a big difference because it's unlocking a lot of use cases for the real world. Uh, for VR, people put on the headset and they feel isolated, mm. right? You, you feel disconnected. And sometimes, uh, and this is not the case anymore when you are in mixed reality because you can see your surrounding. And that is, makes that less, let's say, um, you feel less, um, scared in a way, yeah. <laughs> intimidated, Claustro claustrophobic exactly. as well. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Uh, but then unlock also something because all the digital content that we create could be positioned in, in, in space. So that's from a hardware perspective. We are, I think we are already there with the Quest Pro and it's just going to get better. Um, when we look at, of course, apps and content, they need to grow and Though they need also the input from enterprises, from companies to grow in the right direction. Yeah. That is also like very important. So we personally at Shapes, we work very closely with our clients to just learn. Learn and teach and educate. Yeah. So that is very, very important because we want to see, we see a lot of opportunities, especially for a tool that is so horizontal like ours. Uh, as I was saying, automotive, uh, event design, uh, or product design, or, or process. So it, it is, we are there to learn and, and to educate uh, our clients with it. There is one thing that is also very important, uh, and, and that is also the underlying infrastructure. Mm. So when we think about, for example, rolling out several headsets, I think the quest for business is going to play a key role. And that's why it's also very important that that is, uh, for example, roll out not just in the US, but also here in Europe so that companies can, as fast as possible, get to explore and, uh, and, uh, and use this for, for uh, in a way that is more streamlined, right? That doesn't require, requires to fiddle with, with headset, with permissions. So that is certainly very, very important. Yeah, abs absolutely. I think, um, you know, device management and, as you say, the sort of infrastructure um, that sits behind it is, is critical for being able to, to hit that sort of more mass rollout, should we say, Absolutely. within organizations. I've just checked the clock and I can't believe how quickly time is flying. Oh, we are out like, of time? Not, not yet, <laughs> not yet, but we're getting there. Okay, okay, so, okay. So thankfully, need... I've got some time left. Uh, okay, go so, ahead. Perfect. So I would like to pivot a little bit into thinking more about like where the future is is going with, with VR. But um, just 
kind of like looking at sort of any insights that you have for business leaders. I know you have a lot of conversations with different um, leaders, different organizations, um, and you've seen the transformational impacts that um, VR can have within um, business. So what are the three key insights or advice that you would give to business leaders that they need to know about VR? Right. So one thing that is uh, that I think is very important is that mixed reality is going to unlock a brand new. Uh, it's unlocking a brand new way of of using this technology and bringing value to the space. Right. So it is. It is not again just claustrophobic. It's not just being there and, and being disconnected from the world. So that is something that is unlocking so many opportunity, especially from the side of creativity and design. Because seeing an object in in context. It's incredibly valuable. Um, another uh, another key insight is that the while it is very very important to think about how you can make things faster, mm -hmm. it's also very important to think what can you do that you wouldn't be able of doing. Yeah. Right. So when I, I spoke specifically about that example from 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 La Poste, that is exactly an example. Like someone without 3D experience, then can be equipped with new skills. And that is something that I think is critical and, and it has a big impact on, on, on how people approach the technology, but provide value to the business. So, absolutely. And um, the, other, the other is, do not, creative process right now is happening on a flat screen. Yeah. Our world is not flat, right? I mean, if, again, and I'm bringing that up again, but if, Ideas are made with cardboard, with clay, with Lego blocks, going to a space and not behind the screen. There is a reason. Our brain works differently. So I think that especially when thinking about creativity and collaboration, uh, I think it's very, very important to, to, to just think about that potential. I do have one more, mm. actually, yeah, if you allow me. It. And that is the, the collaboration aspect. We live in a world that is more and more distributed, for example. So, and, and I mean, being able to feel connected in a way that you couldn't just behind the screen, yeah. right? It, it, is, it is completely different. It, it is another world. So y y you can connect, you can create, uh, and it's not just to have a meeting, but to be productive. Yeah. So this is, this is, I think, something that is also very, 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 very important and something that people maybe dismiss. Could, couldn't agree more. So... Thinking about those business leaders that we've just given these insights to, what is the first step? What should they be doing to right. get into VR? I think that maybe I can share another story, cool. right? Stories are perfect. <laughs> we love a good story. I was actually uh, like a couple of weeks ago in Birmingham at the uh, R&D center at Mondelez. Mm -hmm. So it's the company behind Toblerone, uh, Oreo, and they have launched a whole initiative to explore how immersive technology could help. So the way it was done is that uh, get a, a core group that had the responsibility to explore other apps and see what is available out of the shelf. This is, this is one thing. So people think that they need to develop their own content. That is not true, right? So in this case, for example, they, uh, we were one of the, the, the apps invited. Yeah. And w what we did is like, well, how can, for example, product be visualized on a shelf? How can, uh, how does... Um, uh, um, a consumer snacks during the day. You can tell a different story that is not just behind the PowerPoint slides. Uh, or how does a premium pack of Oreo maybe gets opened up, right? And those are all use cases that's been explored that we are actively exploring together to see how the whole organization could benefit. So what's the first step? Get some people in that knows how to this technology works already scout and see what are the apps that out of the shelf could could benefit your organization and from there uh running a small lab it's it's probably the first the first step perfect love a good story so never shy away from stories <laughs> <laughs> my last question to you i'm going to give you a crystal ball to look into the future so gaze into your crystal ball um what does enterprise VR look like in two, five, ten years' time? Right. So I think that if, if we look at, at, at vision, there are going to be glasses on our desk uh, and lighter uh, and 
especially in enterprises, we will have already seen the value of running those interactions in a mixed reality environment, in a virtual reality environment. And along with that, there are going to be ecosystems where you can move from one app that has provided value to another. So we will just create new workflow, a, a new way to create, collaborate, have fun, uh, also, while Very we are important. at work, uh, meditate yeah. uh, for our own wellness. So I think th they are just going to be on our desk and we will find like more and more ways because content is going to get better uh, and the workforce is going to benefit and the organization is certainly going to benefit. Fantastic. I think I couldn't agree with you more. Interoperability is absolutely key. Um, to where the future is going to come and uh, form factor 100 yes, percent yes yes um, Gabriele it has been an absolute pleasure talking to you today sadly we are out of time I can't believe how time flies so fast <laughs> in this place but just an enormous thank you so much for all the insights for the great stories that you've uh, you've shared on what the impact VR is having in business today and where it can extend to the future. Um, and thank you to everyone who's taken time to listen in today. I hope we have inspired you to want to explore more about what VR can do for work. If you want to know more about VR for work, do head over to forwork.meta.com where you can check out our range of MetaQuest VR headsets, learn more about VR solutions, or easily schedule a call with one of our experts. And if you want to learn more about Shapes XR and what Gabriele and the team are working on, just head to shapesxr.com. That's all from us this time. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you again, Gabriele. Um, we'll see you next time.